Welcome to the Web Talk series Corona Crisis Lessons for the Future of Cities presented by Körper Foundation. With this series, we want to look at how cities came through the Corona Crisis and what role digital technologies played during the coping with the crisis. We will talk to experts, crisis managers and decision makers from cities in Germany, Europe and the world. They will provide insights into the measures on site and we will look at the effects on society, on education, culture, business and urban life. But now let's switch to the lessons for the future of cities. I'm pleased that Peter Beer is the moderator for this series. Peter Beer is an expert on digitization and a strategy consultant. He co-founded and managed renewed technology conferences such as the Cognitive Cities Conference and ThinksCon. Thank you very much for your attention. Please enjoy today's episode. Hi and welcome to the Kerber Foundation series, Corona Crisis, Lessons for the Future of Cities. My name is Peter Beer, I'm your host today. In this series, we interview public officials around the world to learn about local coronavirus strategies, strategies for cities, how specific cities respond to corona. Especially, we want to learn about these like hyper-local strategies and how to differentiate from more global ones. We want to learn about the role of digital tools in those strategies, and we'd like to learn a little bit more about the role of civil society. And finally, we want to hear about some learnings, what worked, what didn't work, what were surprises that, that were unforeseeable. And today I'm very excited to have with us the lead for public tech at the Chief Technology Officer Office at the City of Amsterdam, Ike Van Emmeren. Ike, Thanks so much for making the time. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and also tell us a little bit where the CTO office and public tech fit into the larger uh, constellation at Amsterdam. Thank you. That, that will make sense, I think, to give a little bit of perspective of, of, perspective of, of what's happening. Um, no, Peter, thanks. Thanks for, for doing this interview because I think it's very important to, to, to share experience um, across cities. I think we did it itself. Um, uh, for, from our point of view, we did a lot what you did, uh, asking other cities, what do you do, what are your intentions, what's successful or not. So I think it's useful to share a bit of what we do. Um, my name is Ike Vremer. I work um, for the Chief Technology Office, uh, the Central Innovation Unit for the City of Amsterdam. Uh, I'm the lead public tech. And what is public tech? Well, we try to make, and it sounds obvious, but it's, 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 it's an important thing to do, I think. Um, make tech actually work for people and putting uh, citizens' rights, digital rights up front on, on how we do so. Um, we, we know that we have to put citizens first, but in the end, um, we don't always do so. so. So how do we do that? I think that, that that's the main goal of uh, public tech. Um, and that includes uh, fundamental uh, perspectives, like, well, what are digital rights and, and what is our vision? I think, um, well, as Amsterdam, I think we do have this image of, of free freedom and a creativity and an inclusive city. I mean, we've got over more than 180 different nationalities. Um, so when you talk about inclusive design, that, that's, that's a challenge. So all these things we, uh, we face, how does that uh, fit together when you, uh, when you have a crisis like a Corona? Um, well, you asked, how does the CTO office fit in uh, the city? I'm not part of the crisis team around Corona. I'm one of the, well, the surroundings around this. We've got, the, um, of course, a mayor uh, who led the task force on, um, um, on, on, on the approach how to handle this crisis. And several crisis teams were, uh, were organized on uh, economic impact, on social impact, and uh, et cetera. And in all these different phases, uh, phases of, of, of well, this response of the city, um, we advise or produce tools or uh, different kind of things. I think it's good to, to elaborate on that a bit more later on. Mm -hmm. um, it's also good to get a little bit of insight on, on what's happening in the Netherlands because I noticed there's a lot of difference within, um, well, which country, uh, country you have, which role does uh, um, uh, local authorities uh, play. Um, we worked a lot together with national government um, experimenting and using tech. 
together with uh, Department of Economic Affairs, so with one of the main uh, research authorities um, who work on a project on well, Corona Tech, how can it help unlock? I think that's something to elaborate a little more on uh, later on. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, the main focus was on uh, blue, as we called. I mean, uh, police on the street, etc. what's happening. So the first phase is, okay, people are sick. What are we going to do? Uh, what are the, our, our capacities in, uh, in hospitals? Uh, how do we get information systems uh, running up? Uh, what do we do with, with uh, people who live on the street, etc.? All these challenges, I think that, that was the first, uh, first wave. Uh, of course, still happening. Um, mm -hmm. Then we did, okay, there's definitely... Uh, a large impact we should scale up um, people do have to work from home people have to uh, get education from home people have to well, uh, get isolated what how do how do we solve that uh, third wave how do we deal with companies how do we deal with uh, uh, people don't have any income and the fourth phase I think is okay how do we um, make this work for a long while how can we use well, for, from my perspective, technology to support, um, well, ease down uh, a lockdown, um, but also, okay, how, what things did we miss and how can we improve this for, well, I'm not saying COVID-20 is uh, going to happen, but we weren't prepared for everything as we expect it to be. Like, if you look at the rankings, um, we do pretty well in the Netherlands when it mm -hmm. comes to, okay, who is ready for, for the next pandemic? Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the Netherlands, we're doing quite good in that kind of things, mm -hmm. but still, when it started, well, we got more work to do than, than we expected if you look at this ranking. So I think it doesn't always match example? the benchmark. Can you give an example of like something you learned there where you realized, oh, wait a minute, there was like a, a blank spot on our mental map? Well, I think it took more time to, to, to know actually about availability of hospital beds or mm -hmm. what are other locations within the city where you can uh, mm -hmm. people. Or I can show you later on. Um, of course, we do have information on, on how wide uh, a street is or mm -hmm. uh, the pavement on the street, uh, but it's not, I mean, no one ever asked um, us, can you please share the open data for uh, the wide of, of, of the pavement in the street? I mean, no one ever asked us. We don't know. If we, if we would have, have it before, it would be way more easy to mm -hmm. say, okay, um, we can have a different perspective on the lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, like Barcelona has this the perimeter. You can go outside, but only around your own corner. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, other cities, you have a complete lockdown. Mm -hmm. it's okay. How do we do this? Mm -hmm. Can we um, make it more flexible because mm -hmm. we've got more space uh, in the street? Or mm -hmm. um, what are actually the effects and figures? Um, who, who is vulnerable um, uh, for the COVID-19 and who is not? Mm -hmm. I think that kind of information structure wasn't, wasn't there yet. I mean... Mm -hmm. If you look at the crisis team, and, and it's really impressive how people how people work, but there was no uh, experience on tech right. in the core team. Of course, uh, the mayor and the leaders of the uh, the police and etc. They, of course, got it together and uh, trained. But it's not that the, 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 the tech lead or someone from our team uh, or any other team is present at those yeah. meetings and say, okay, well, maybe there is a solution you could use, and um, well, maybe you try to use this, but know that. Well, the slide deck was pretty good from this company, but know that, that it's not real. It's not built yet. And I think that's, that's a good lesson. Um, and has that been changing now? Are you, is, is someone from the yes, CEO office now present in all these conversations? Uh, yes. And, and where it's relevant, there, there, there's their there colleagues present, yes. And I think even, even further than that, um, it's not only about being present and saying, okay, is this an alternative? I think uh, two colleagues are checking continuously mm -hmm. okay what are the asked solutions uh, what are suggested solutions and not only about is there um tech who can help but also on the check is it right to do so or can we use a low-tech version mm -hmm. because of course you would expect from the chief technology office that we, that we would say okay tech is good and tech forever but well obviously there has been a lot of discussion about uh, the corona tracing apps mm -hmm. but it should happen around more technology Right. We, we are using or we want to use and do we need to place extra cameras or can we use other sensors as well which have a less privacy invading uh, impact or so that, that, that kind is of a super fascinating angle i think because like amsterdam of course has has in these issues always been like a, a real pioneer in terms of privacy aware technologies um and like so how how does what is the decision making process there how do you balance these things what are some of the examples that that you've worked with maybe 
um, where you go like, okay, here's this way to trace. Like you said, maybe should we go cameras or should we find like another type of sensor? Can you, can you just speak a little more about that example? Well, let, let me start before the, the, the critical part. Let's start with, with the more positive um, mm-hmm. uh, side. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to share one of the articles uh, mm-hmm. um, on what's going on. It is this one. Uh, if it's right, you'll see now on the screen more freedom of movement uh, with smart technology. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see some measures about what we do. Can we use smart solutions um, uh, using technology? Can we uh, open up libraries? Because we had, a, of course, I mean, we're very proud of all the cultural institutions we have in Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. Um, but closing down, well, visit, uh, visit next time you're in Amsterdam, but f- closing down Rijksmuseum does cost mm-hmm. a lot of money. So how can you open it up again? But it's not only about uh, the money perspective, it's also about, um, uh, well, it's good to be a museum, etc. So the sooner we can, we can open up that kind of places, it's, it's, it's good for the, for, the, for, the, uh, for the energy you have in the city. So it's very important to, well, can we use technology to, to well, for people enjoy also the beautiful things in life again? Mm-hmm. Um, so this is one of the examples um, uh, we did, more freedom of movement with smart technology. And can we just like um, dig in, quickly dig into like the first bullet point? So that's something I find really fascinating. So there you choose an approach that doesn't track individuals through the city, but rather takes aggregate data, I assume, from like how, how busy certain museums might be at certain times so that people can then choose themselves when they can securely go into the museum. Is that, is that right? Yes, that's right. Um, well, actually, there are a few things um, hap- happening on a perspective. Yeah. Um, of course, everyone knows that wherever you are, someone knows that you're there. Um, mm-hmm. And that's also the critical part. We should discuss that later on. Yeah. Um, we have a, had a huge debate and still going on on the use of, an example, telco data. Can mm-hmm. we use information on where you've been knowing how crowd, uh, crowded mm-hmm. it is? Um, that's one. Another one is we already have, of course, um, and not the intensive version like London has. I mean, London mm-hmm. has a camera or six of them on every street corner. Sure. We've got definitely low. One of the main principles in Amsterdam is you can walk through Amsterdam anonymously, mm-hmm. which, of course, is not completely true. We do have to make mm-hmm. sure that our city is safe as well. But there's a good balance. Mm-hmm. Every new camera should be approved by um, by our city council. Mm-hmm. Um, so that gives you a view on, yes, we do know it. But when do you do you use it? When is the crisis large enough to say, okay, we open up all the cameras and use all sure. the statistics on? So the main thing is we do test at the moment on several places, um, counting mechanisms on, uh, can we use uh, AI machine learning to count people, how many people are in the street, or even though which direction do they go uh, from here to there? We didn't use it in the beginning because we don't know how good the tech is. So we said, okay, well, let's speed up um, uh, our testing but don't use it yet because well, we're, we're not sure if we can, we can rely on it. Um, well, well not, not we did, but um, at the TU Delft, one of the better universities, together with AMS, the Amsterdam Metropolitan Institution, mm-hmm. um, it's a combination of the uh, Technical University from Delft, mm-hmm. uh, Wageningen University, and MIT. Mm-hmm. Um, and they came up with, well, the lab I mentioned before, what's the, what's the distance on, on uh, where can you walk? And I'll show you the map. And this is the map where you can see, okay, how much, uh, where can you go? What's the social distance on, um, on the map? Can you explore oh, wow. this? Can you, uh, where you go? And obviously, it's impossible to go only on, uh, on the red lines or the blue lines. And you see, mm-hmm. okay, if you go a little bit more uh, outside the city, you get more blue and people can walk more freely. So mm-hmm. these insights give you the perspective, okay, does the lockdown make sense to say, okay, everyone cannot go out, but in a different neighborhood, you have more um, uh, space to, to avoid each other on the street. Mm-hmm. This map also showed that, actually, this is the cent- city center you're looking at at the moment. So this is, is, this is based on what kind of data now? This is based on... This is based on, on um, uh, a few data sources they um, uh, combined, but um, okay. uh, all data on the distance of the street, that's, that's, that's available data on, on right. geo. Uh, uh, geodata. Mm-hmm. This helped us give uh, for two things. People who liked it can use it um, to build something upon it. Okay, what's the best wa- way to walk from A to B to your supermarket, knowing that there's enough distance? Mm-hmm. But it also helped us to say, okay, if we should close down some streets to uh, make sure where is not 
possible for people to well pass by each other um, with, 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 the, with the right distance, which streets should we look down? So this, these insights uh, are really helpful. And this is, well, in the end, visualization of data, and especially on this, this level, mm-hmm. really helps. This is one example. Um, another one is, of course, if you want to go to, to the gym, uh, you, people do look at uh, uh, Google Maps because Google Maps have, has a pretty accurate uh, time knowing, okay, don't go at the gym between four and uh, seven because everyone goes, please go in the afternoon or something else. Yeah. Like that kind of information, a lot of people use that information to well, plan where do we go mm-hmm. or not. Uh, several cities, um, uh, not only in the Netherlands, but worldwide supermarkets mm-hmm. said, okay, from seven to eight, uh, elderly people uh, can have sort of a private supermarket spaces and well all that kind of information had been used to okay can, can you help people uh, spread the city mm-hmm. uh, and one of the efforts is um, the data you see on Google Maps is not real time it's a week old yeah. um, so can we create real time information out of it and can we use it so that's another experiment that colleagues um, and I'm, I cannot share the link at the moment but mm-hmm. it's on github uh, slash Amsterdam um, you can check actually how they build it to, okay, can we use that, uh, that information to, um, um, well, to give advice to, to, to people. We don't use it at the moment as well because, well, we're not sure if, if it's correct or not. And then you come to the thing you asked about uh, digital rights and, and the perspective on technology. Mm-hmm. We do want to know what's possible mm-hmm. so you can give advice or not. Mm-hmm. Um, so we experiment, uh, experimented with an example, one of the main parks, the Vomba Park, way too overcrowded. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you use a QR code? Um, that's okay. You can buy a ticket and go in. Mm-hmm. But is it necessary? Or can you, you know, the bounces um, uh, at the disco, I mean, they've got those uh, mm-hmm. clickers where they mm-hmm. count how many people are, are in, um, is maybe more effective. Let's try. Or let's at least put them um, um, uh, on top of each other to, to mm-hmm. well, for the decision makers mm-hmm. or politicians to have options. Mm-hmm. Okay, we can use the tech. We know we've got people who can build it. No mm-hmm. problem. Take some time, but we can do it. Or you use these kind of techniques. Mm-hmm. And that, that's how we want to, to, to help um, uh, raise this. It's about the judicial perspective because mm-hmm. you, you can do actually a lot, especially in the Netherlands. We now have mm-hmm. um, well, a temporary law around mm-hmm. COVID. Uh, but do you want it? Because there's a difference between is it is it allowed and do we want it as a, as a city? Is this the kind of Amsterdam you want to be? Yeah. And so on one side, I think the main thing is we do want to show what's possible around tech with impressive solutions, I think. These, these are a few examples of them. Um, but also, okay, do you really want it? Like if you, well, we often use the phrase in Amsterdam, like public spaces, like your living room, you should feel happy, etc. But would you place a camera in, in your living room and let, let everyone watch you, what you're doing? I think that's also part of the story. Right. Uh, and yes, we did in some, some, some places. So in some places in the city center, we put extra cameras because we wanted to know uh, what's going on. And but it's at least a decision um, uh, thought through. Like it's an um, intentional thing to do so uh, before you place it. Is there... I, I vaguely remember, and I hope I remember correctly, that Amsterdam has long since been experimenting with cameras in public space that automatically strip personal identifiable information out of the video feed. I think, I think you tested it around trash detection on the street. Yeah. Um, is, this, is this same approach going to be used here? Um, well, yes and no. Actually, that's 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 the light version of it. Yeah. Um, if you want to reuse it, um, uh, ODK, it's called uh, okay. Object Detection Kit AI. Um, also available uh, on, on 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 the GitHub and reusable for mm-hmm. every city. Um, actually, that kind of information does help because it's it's what we did in the experiment. You probably remembered is can we use some cameras which already drive around uh, in the city? Yeah. Map out, okay, how many uh, garbage bags are in the street or how many uh, pieces of trash are, or, or litter are, mm-hmm. are on the street. Um, and can we use it as an extra source for information for uh, well, for people working in the, in the, in the garbage department? Mm-hmm. So, say, okay, this is actually over there. But of course, we do rely on the eyes and ears of our coworkers on the street or mm-hmm. people who give um, uh, signals or complain to the city. It's an extra source of information to well get a better detailed image mm-hmm. of the city. Uh, and yes, in that technique, it's it's um, one of the main things is to well only use the um, uh, 
well, the outside of, of, of uh, the image of people. So not knowing it's, it's you, but it's only someone walking there and right. only using them. Um, well, you know the how you draw um, a person when you were four years old. Yeah, that's the kind just of the information outlines. you. Right. Yeah, that, just the outlines. I mean, that's that's what you get from that kind of information uh, sources. Mm -hmm. and nothing more than that. And that's also the thing is, can we use privacy by design in the kind of techniques we use? Mm -hmm. So that's why well, you can use this object detection kit for these kind of things, mm -hmm. because we well, there's no footage um, being being transferred. Only. Mm -hmm. the the type of person only in lines. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a really fascinating ap approach to to go about things. Um, and also, you mentioned there, um, I think twice already that like a lot of the stuff currently just lives on GitHub. A lot is open source and usable by by others. So these are all working tools that you also make available. The source code you make it available to other cities. There's a lot of exchange, right? You mentioned that you work with in some of these programs with you know MIT and Dutch universities. You were you're part of like Amsterdam is part of this cities coalition for digital rights that New York City and Amsterdam and Barcelona I think started together like a couple of years yeah. ago um, that specifically brings to the forefront all these these best practices and all these learnings uh, and a platform yeah. for CTOs to exchange learnings across cities right um, what what role does that play? Because it's it's a really good approach, I think, to to share a lot of knowledge and to share not just knowledge but also the tools with cities who may not have the staff and expertise that Amsterdam has, right? Well, it's it's there are two sides of that story because I think it's a really good question because saying everything is open source, I mean, it's also like like a brand thing, which is in the end it doesn't mean anything if it's written in a in a in a coding language no one mm -hmm. understands. I mean, putting things open source of, or is when there's no community behind it, it doesn't right. make sense. So, uh, but I think we're in the beginning of that phase, and and mm -hmm. um, a lot of things we do create ourselves are open source, but mm -hmm. in the end, only 8% of the things we have in Amsterdam is open source. So okay. um, when it comes to numbers, it's, it's not that much. And I think it's, 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 it's more than, 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 than a lot of cities, but in the end, it's not that much. When it comes to tools like this, and we produce ourselves or uh, with partners around it, um, open source by default, but it doesn't say that you can actually use it directly in your city. Uh, mm -hmm. It does take, well, meetings um, uh, to exchange. Uh, but what's the good thing, I think, is that we had a lot of talks within these cities. Mm -hmm. And uh, within the Cities Coalition, we had still have weekly meetings with, okay, what's happening in your city? Can we exchange? What's, what's going on at your side? And, um, well, co-workers who actually designed and worked on this um, uh, crowdness radar uh, talked with cities in uh, colleagues in Milan, an example, to exchange. Like, there's code, but you need to know, okay, what's, what's happening around it and can you reuse it? A lot of ideas are not only tech, it's also about um, can you use ideas. An example, mm -hmm. we noticed that more people than we thought didn't have a good internet connection at home. So mm -hmm. we thought, okay, all the children can, can get education from home, but you do need an internet connection and you do need a computer and you do need knowledge how to use it. And uh, the facts and figures we had was that 98% of the people in Amsterdam had internet connection. Well, still, uh, we handed out a few thousand laptops um, to kids to really? actually be able to work. So the, our, our, the, right. the, the statistics we had weren't, weren't really matching the, the situation and, and, and um, the signs we got from, from, from the people in our city saying, okay, well, how can I get education from a distance? Because I've got three kids and one nine-year-old iPad. Um, how does that work? So, and I'm really impressed about not only people in the city, but actually a lot of volunteers and a lot of people in the city who said, okay, I've got a laptop and can someone else can have it. Right. In the end, you need a more decent structure because the school has to uh, is not ready to right. work with a thousand different different types of laptops. So, I think I I would love to to share 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 another thing uh, mm -hmm. my screen because you mentioned this this coalition of digital rights mm -hmm. on on the, uh, mm -hmm. citiesfordigitalrights.org. A lot of more information is uh, there, mm -hmm. but this actually summarize one of the main things. Human rights of times in uh, COVID. I think a few things are going on on the topic. One is, it's nothing new. There's no such thing as human rights in time, times of COVID. I mean, human rights are always there, but the main thing is we should pay attention to it uh, now. I mean, the things happening. Um, and some of the things are being more uh, cleared out and specific. An example around the, the tracing app, um, how much not only we, but 
every city worldwide has to rely on Google and um, Google and Apple opening up their um, uh, access to Bluetooth on your phone to be able to um, uh, to use a tracing app. So the reliable uh, reliability we have on tech, that's one example. Mm -hmm. But I think there's, there's more going on um, when it comes to human rights than only the main things. It's also about um, doing the good thing is not only ticking the check boxes like, okay, did we do the, the right thing? It's also about, um, well, what we mentioned earlier, what kind of city do you, do you want to be? Um, what kind of um, view on tech do you, do you want uh, to have? Mm -hmm. I think this is um, long enough shared now. I think on the screen you can use it. Mm -hmm. um, I can share some examples on what we did. Um, great, but yeah. maybe it's good to know that this is part of the International Monitor of Urban Approach dealing with COVID. Every two weeks we have this monitor mm -hmm. and we check um, uh, what's going on in different cities. And an example, mm -hmm. the content for this week um, oh, wow. is, of course, human rights. It's about what's happening um, in Brazil, what's happening at our own labor market, what's happening in mobility in Europe. And mm -hmm. it's a little bit more, can we provide, and um, while well, we start, setting this up uh, from our CTO office, but um, it's being catched up with our international office and we're doing great work to get a little bit more insights behind, well, the news item saying, okay, well, in this city, uh, they banned all the cars and people can walk on the street. Well, what's actually happening and what's the policy and can we reuse it? Right. That's, that's, that's what we did, what, what we do in this two weekly uh, thing. Well, pictures, text, etc. And it's good if you want to uh, have it international office at Amsterdam.nl, you can subscribe and, uh, get these as well. And I think that's also an important thing. So it's not only about uh, saying digital rights are important, it's also about, well, getting examples from other cities. And one of the main things I think is um, a lot of NGOs or activists um, raised their voice the last few months, and not only in the Netherlands, everywhere, I think, saying, what's the, the, uh, the function creep? Mm -hmm. Like, well, you designed this, and but you did something else with it, and that, that's not okay. And I don't think that any city or politician, at least when you talk about digital rights, does it on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, at least I wouldn't, but I can imagine it happens. So mm -hmm. how do we work on this and how do we de design it? So um, instead of only talking through newspapers with uh, all the NGOs who made the statement, we, we invited um, uh, a few, well, strong voices in, 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 um, in the news lately. Mm -hmm. to get, how can we work on this? To get it more because we know we're not perfect mm -hmm. when it comes to to uh, tech and ethics and we should definitely improve but mm -hmm. well we've never been in a pandemic a crisis like this mm -hmm. before so can we please work on this uh, more yeah. strongly together and one of the main things is is and, and one of the main the strongest voices i think we should we should we should do with is that um of course i think a lot of tech can be used uh, for good but we do ask wrong questions uh, often so do you need a dashboard on this? Or do you need a tracing app? Or can you solve it in a different perspective? Mm -hmm. Or I really like this example of a completely different top, top topic a long time ago. It was the director of a large Deutsche Bank who said, everyone's talking about AI, but if I just have this large um, room with 200 students with a sign AI in the door, and I put it in what's happening and put it out, uh, what's happening there? Can I fake it? And I think that's, that's the same thing. Um, what's the low-tech version of it? And how right. does it work? What's actually the question you put in there? And a lot of questions we put, put, put on there and we start working, creating stuff, the questions are wrong often. Mm -hmm. So can we help create better questions? That's one side. The other one is, and that is also the function creep, of course, you'd also expect government to use the information they have. So if we, if we do have sensors in a city knowing stuff, then you should use them or you should remove them. But it's, it's a little bit false idea of, of safety. If you say, well, we've got this surveillance tool in, in, in our uh, sewage right. measuring everything, well, but we don't use it. I mean, that's also pretty strange. They say, we, we don't use it. So it's also about, can we do that in the right way? So it, it, we're also working on more future plans. Um, one of the European calls we're, we're uh, joining is, how can we measure within the sewage uh, the next pandemic mm -hmm. and how can we design it in a more privacy by design? Because if we put sensors on every street corner in the sewage, you can also read out um, 
who is obese and who is not. Well, that's not the information we want to share or, or yeah. even being, being created. I think that, mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not ethical. Um, so we also think, okay, how do you dis design this? Where do you put sensors to make sure that you did a good day? Or is it even necessary? And can it be done in a different way? Right. And that, that kind of questions are being raised. And it's not only on the side with, with people like me, we're pushing like, this is important, you should do something with it, but also in a more formal structure and, and being it a normal, normal process in organization. There's something I just wanted to ask about, like how, how does that look in practice? Because I, I love the idea that you zoom all the way out in a way that in industry you often don't see so much, especially like around startups, but that you actually zoom out and say, first of all, we need to ask better questions and then also figure out not just what we can do, but maybe figure out what we should do and how we can go. Is there a low-tech alternative that might be as good, but you know that just avoids even like capturing all that data that could be abused? Um, like data avoidance as data protection is always, of course, the most efficient way to protect any data, right? Um, what does it look like in, can you just give an example of like, or, or give us some insight into how the process works? You say it's not just like one person that says, hey, by the way, this is probably a bad idea. You say there's like, this is becoming part of the formal conversation as well. Yeah, on one hand, in the end, it's, it's a lot of times it comes down to one person or at least sure. a person who say, okay, people, please think this mm -hmm. through. If you really want this, okay, mm -hmm. but, but please think of these kind of things. Um, uh, so I think that, that that's mm -hmm. the real life situation. The other one is um, uh, we've got all kind of checks, of course, before you start a project. Um, and we can have all kind of checks. We've got, um, uh, well, for the, for the GDPR, we've got several checks before you can start a project, etc. But what you want is a culture where not, where not people say, okay, I checked all the boxes, but um, I'm the product owner and I think we're doing the right thing. And I can say that because, well, during not crisis time, um, we talked a lot about what kind, of, what, what kind of living room do we want to have. And I know that what, what I'm building here, that's not okay. And we can put that in check boxes, but um, we do want people in our city who actually know stuff about tech. Mm -hmm. um, so if we in crisis times or not. We buy stuff, we know what's actually going on there. And people can say, okay, this is, this is right or wrong. Well, of course, we do have to create these checkboxes because, mm -hmm. well, you also want, want a sort of systematic approach on this. And what we're doing there is, um, and that's not especially because of uh, COVID-19, but uh, together with the home department, we're working on this human rights impact assessment, mm -hmm. or at least they have an initiative. Uh, Barcelona has an initiative, several cities have an initiative. And we try to put this in our normal tech structure. Um, we also work together with the University of Amsterdam. Um, um, well, can we do a sort of reverse um, uh, check on, okay, what kind of decisions did we made? What was the information and, uh, around using tech or what tech has been used actually also in other cities? Uh, so that's also investigating on, on a more systematic approach. Mm -hmm. And the third one, which is I think important is, um, not only saying what's wrong, but by being able to, to supply uh, alternatives. And um, because of course you can say to the mayor, okay, no, don't use this, but, but the problem is still there. Uh, so okay, what, what's the alternative? Um, an example, we do know that uh, Jorrit Jung from Harvard, I think he introduced a description a few years ago around data deserts. And I really like the time, uh, term data deserts. Um, it's always talk about data lakes. And I really like uh, the thing about deserts because of course, you can use information to, 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 to guide these approaches, but uh, there's also a lot of things you don't know. And mm -hmm. uh, an example, our system where you can make complaints to the city, people in a neighborhood with more uh, attorne uh, attorneys and, and well, more educated people, uh, they talk the language of the city. So when they make a complaint, it's easier to put it into a process. Mm -hmm. If you use the word complaint, um, well, then we know what to do. I mean, it's complaint. We have to well, we have to call or do something. If you if you uh, write to us like oh, the street, then it gets more in, uh, complicated for us at least to to process it automatically. So, mm. knowing that we don't have equal information sources in in our yeah. city, actually knowing that um, um, it's different for someone in one neighborhood or another one mm. to be able to go out in public space because there are more parks there, more parks there. How can you? level that with your approach and just, just from my understanding that means that like there's neighborhoods where people maybe like lower education uh backgrounds 
um, or different different language backgrounds, they might just not articulate their complaints in a way that's easy for the system to kind of take in. And so you have like yes. different levels of, of engagement just because like you, it's not as easy to parse the incoming stuff. Yes, that, that's one of the examples. And I think you, you, you can get more of those, but it's, it's um, and I think it's, it's on one hand, it's nothing new. I mean, everyone who knows the system, I mean, that goes back to, to, to bureaucracy. I think a few, sure. I mean, Babert wrote about these, uh, these things a long time ago. Um, uh, because the moment you know bureaucracy, it's easier to navigate through. And uh, where the people who get subsidies from, from, from government are people who know the language. I mean, that, that's always yeah. the case. Um, and the thing is, we enlarge that uh, if we use a data approach. Mm -hmm. um, and, and part of it, it does help because, well, we can respond faster. But it's also important, and that's, that's why we're setting this, this uh, new lab uh, we're creating with, with the university to say, mm -hmm. can we look in a more systematic way? Um, well, what are the data sources? Is it dry? Is it not dry? And um, do we use our own data? Mm -hmm. Or a lot of companies knowing stuff about a city we don't have access to. How mm -hmm. does it work? Mm -hmm. um, an example, the Google data, which is a week old. Mm -hmm. Can we say to Google, well, that's our data now or not? I have no idea how it works. Mm -hmm. No one knows. Um, so it's not only about is it are there data lakes or not. It's just a general question about we don't know enough about right. how these things works. And I think that's also um, well, it does shape shapes the agenda for the uh, for the next year or so. So that's that's just there are just like open questions that that are simply so new that nobody has finally solved them. If you know someone who knows, then then it would be really helpful. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, or if someone knows, but it's it's. Um, uh, but we, we don't, or at least we're not certain on, on all these topics. And yeah. uh, we do have people know, know a few of these, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, well, it's not the Korean thing. So I think that's, that's the, um, uh, well, that's shaping the agenda for the uh, for next year. So having a more systematic approach on the digital rights within the tech, tech we use on a process way, but also involving uh, opinion or uh, people or NGOs within our process, asking the right questions. Uh, another systematic approach is, well, what kind of sources do we use and and are they okay or not or can we check them who does check them or can do we have access to the information should we create new ones like the sewage um information on on uh, on new viruses and that that's i think the thing where we're facing now having a more systematic approach and and beneath that um i think we've got great cooler colleagues we know these kind of things but we need more i think it's we need more colleagues who, who understand this and uh, question raised, okay, one of the thir first things we did on, on City Hall from the communication department, and I think it was a really good good thing they did, um, is we assumed that a lot of people read the newspaper. Mm -hmm. People don't. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, the group who knows our language uh, making that complaint, but, um, and actually no, saying our language, I mean, that, that that's really wrong itself, because how can we put this in a more... Uh, general acceptable sure. language. So they spread out this this door to door newspaper uh, to every household in Amsterdam, saying, "Okay, there's something happening. Mm -hmm. um, this is what we do at the moment, and please um, ask your neighbor or whatever." Yeah. Um, and I think it's 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 a long time ago since we we reached every household in Amsterdam, and yeah. in the end, we did use a door to door newspaper um, on paper, spreading it around. So I think that that's gives that's an image on. Um, Yes, tech can save the world, but in the end, we do need a newspaper going door to door. I love this approach of like hybrid, like high tech, low tech um, model. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, just um, so we don't go over time and I can let you um, let you go. Just like a final question. Among all these things we discussed, I mean, we, we covered like a huge range of, of topics. Um, were there any things that you realize worked particularly well, didn't work at all, or were just playing up surprising to you, just like some surprising things you learned in these past few months? I think what really what worked really well is that we already defined some some innovation areas in Amsterdam. One is the uh, Marine Terrain, the, the former naval, uh, well, Navy is, is, is still there for, for on, on a part of it. That's one of the innovation quarters of the city. And another one is um, uh, around the arena, the football stadium of, um, mm -hmm. of Ajax, but also mm -hmm. the center of all the concerts, etc. And we already have a lot of tech in place in these, these, these things, but also a lot of checks and balances about what we do there. Okay. An example experiment we did, we did earlier, 
uh, if we have a foot, football match and um, a concert of Phil Collins, whoever, at the same moment, we've got issues. It's impossible to get everyone there. So we offer people who go there every week. Okay, if you go a little bit earlier, you get a free burger and mm-hmm. it saves a lot, a lot of hassle. That kind of experiments we already did. So we do have a lot of information about, okay, what do people do? Um, privacy by design is, is already arranged. And I think that's a really good thing, um, a good example. Um, uh, we already had our partners in place and that's how we could speed up, uh, well, innovation around Arena. And what made it really uh, going fast forward is that we work together with um, Economic Department of the National Office, together with um, uh, the envir- Environmental Office uh, on pand- pandemics, etc., to work together. Okay, can we use this area to well, test an experiment? I think that really worked. Right. And that's how we can go pretty quickly uh, to, uh, can we ease the lockdown? And I think people are pretty happy, I think, in Amsterdam, knowing that we do know that the moment there is another lockdown, people will probably uh, continue and join. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, well, because you know it's well thought, etc. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing all this. this there's uh, so much going on in Amsterdam that is that I really uh, found extremely fascinating to learn about. Um, thank you so much for making the time and for sharing all of this. Thank you for the for the opportunity. I would love to 